All right. Welcome. Thank you for joining us for Humanities DC Vision Projects and Events Grant Workshop. We are glad that you're here and interested in our grant opportunities. My name is Loy Nemard. I am the Director of Grant Making and Programs here at Humanities DC. Also with us on this Zoom is Eli Youssef, Community Grants Manager, and Hilary Steen, Community Grants Manager. Our outline for today is introductions, talking about the purpose of this workshop, talking to you a little bit about Humanities DC for those of you who aren't familiar, and then digging into this particular grant opportunity, the application process, and then Q&A. Um, sorry about that. So in terms of the purpose of this workshop, just to be clear that we're gonna be providing more detail about this particular grant opportunity and highlighting key aspects of the application, but we won't be covering everything. So we're just identifying things that we think that folks might miss or that we think are important to keep in mind, but you absolutely do need to review the request for proposals, RFP, as well as the application itself to get all the information that you need. We did an overview workshop and the recordings and presentations for that will be on the website this week. And that might be helpful to you if you haven't participated in that before. And that goes over all the different grant opportunities and some of the technicalities. So for those of you who would like, it would be helpful to know who is with us on the Zoom. So if you could, um, tell us your name, your organizational affiliation, if any, and 30 seconds on your project idea and your interest in it um, out loud, if you are comfortable doing that, or you could type it into the chat. So anyone can choose to go first. Good afternoon. My name is Tracy Billingsley. I am with a, a group called Sisters in the Community, um, and our aim is to really uh, motivate and uplift youth, um, young adults, um, and um, women, and not necessarily all in that order, um, and not just women in general, but just to be supportive um, in various um, aspects of what happens in daily life. And I'm an educator by trade. At Thank you. Linda Keenan is interested in making a documentary about the arc of urban cycling over the past 50 years in the DC area. Interesting. Anyone else? I can go. Hi, my name is Glory. I'm the founder of Well Read Black Girl. My organization focuses on literature for Black, Brown, and Indigenous people. We have a festival every year. We had our first one in DC last year. And um, we are now launching a summer youth initiative called Camp Joy. And I'm excited to start that off this year, this in the summer. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. I'm happy to go next. Um, my name is Jocelyn. I am a program manager at Vital Voices Global Partnership here in Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm here on behalf of myself and my own interests as opposed to my employers. So um, I have a Ph.D. in the humanities and uh, I'm interested in founding a nonprofit that examines debt and folks who struggle with debt in the DC area and the psychological impacts of that and would want the project to, to use leverage storytelling in order to raise awareness around this important issue. So that is kind of the hat that I am wearing today in this call. Thank you. Hi, my name is Joy Mosley and I'm the executive producer of a documentary film called Serve with Pride. And our storytelling project um, highlights the contributions of LGBTQ plus military veterans, um, as well as the trailblazers who were instrumental in the overturn of the uh, repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Very interesting, thank you. Help other people. Okay. 
in the chat, we have Nick Lindner, Lindner a Ward 5 filmmaker interested in the story of a DC resident with ties to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And Alice Sadler from the DC Environmental Film Festival. Uh, they have a March festival each year, in addition to year-round year programming featuring environmental films. We have one more. Grant Ryder with the Capital Movement, interested in putting together storytelling focused dance community concert. Okay. Great. Well, thank you. And feel free to continue adding um, your introduction into the chat. So briefly about Humanities DC, we're the Humanities Council of DC affiliated with the National Endowment for the Humanities. We help all Washingtonians and others connected to the District of Columbia deepen their relationship with the city and each other through the sharing of unique and universal stories, the fostering of intellectual stimulation, and the promotion of cross-cultural understanding. And we do that through our community-informed grant making, which is what this is part of, as well as engaging residents through partnerships, uh, partnership-based public programming. So an overview of this particular grant opportunity, um, we're interested in funding projects that will create public humanities programs that interpret in an innovative way humanities scholarship. Possible projects might be documentary films, planning or executing an event or performance, publications and curricula, tours and exhibits, websites and other digital humanities projects, archives and so much more limited only by your creativity. A point that in last year or in prior years, we had a documentary separate grant opportunity, as well as a separate grant opportunity for events that was called festivals and gatherings. Those are now under visions because we wanted to simplify our grant offerings. Up to 25,000 per award. And um, just to give you a little bit of history, last year, if we combine those, those two separate ones plus visions last year, we gave out 23 grants for a total of $642,000. This year we're planning 16 grants with $400,000. The decrease is because we had a bump in funding last year that we didn't expect to continue. So we were able to do more programming last year. I selected a few examples of things that have been funded under these different categories, just uh, for those of you who are brand new to this, to give you a sense of the breadth and possibilities. On our website, which we're um, rolling out a new website, so slowly adding things to it. Right now we have all the 2022 grants listed, so you can take a look at, at all of them. And hopefully in the future, we'll have more of our past grant opportunities. But just to give you a sense of some of the things that we funded last year, um, Homelessly in Love uh, and Project Sing, two different documentaries, one following the romantic lives of men and women struggling with housing instability, and another following seniors as they emerge as community leaders and organizers. Um, and two example of two events, Anacosta Youth Film and Media Festival, a youth directed festival that actually hasn't quite taken place yet, but should be very interesting. And the Till Reflection, Till Trilogy Reflection series, the Till Trilogy was a trilogy of plays about Emma Till, and the part we funded was a reflection series around it. Um, an interactive multimedia ex website exhibit featuring duo vocal groups and sol solo artists. That event related to that is coming up soon. Um, previously, we helped to fund a uh, documentary by Far Farm Hillsdale, and this DC Legacy Project is events around that, um, the people who lived in and were displaced from that neighborhood. Todd Duncan, a poetry of Po a program of poetry and music, a program featuring poetry, music, and narration, narration to highlight the life and contributions of Todd Duncan, and then a digital guide to medieval DC. So those are just a few examples to show the breadth of possibilities um, based on what folks came up with last year. 
applicant eligibility, DC-based nonprofits are eligible for this opportunity, and that's the sole category. If you are an individual who's interested in this opportunity, you would need to apply through a fiscal sponsor. And also anyone applying must have closed any prior humanities DC grants before submission. Fiscal sponsorship, to touch on that a little bit for individuals or even non 501 C3 organizations that are interested. A fiscal sponsor is a 501c3 nonprofit that assumes all financial legal obligations of the grant award. It's important to note that no more than 10% of the grant award may be used to pay a fiscal sponsor. And the fiscal sponsor would apply um, as if they were the primary applicant um, through our founded system. And if that's something that you're interested in, I'd encourage you to set up some time to talk to our community grants manager more about that. Some of the key grant requirements, you must have a valid EIN and UEI number. The UEI replaced the, in the past, the federal government used the DUNS and they've transitioned to using the UEI, Unique Entity Identifier. And in our grant materials, you can find the link to apply for one. So I encourage you to do that if you're interested in applying for any of our grants or any other federal grants for that matter. Uh, you must have a physical address located, located in Washington, DC. As part of the grant, you need to document all grant expenditures, um, request approval for changes to the approved grant and budget, an interim and final report will be required. And for documentary films, we hope to screen them in a Humanities DC sponsored event. And we would want them to be made available for non-commercial educational use. And we would work with any of the documentarians to ensure that we aren't um, infringing on their ability to, to screen and release their, their documentary first, if that is um, something that's important and necessary for them. Any questions before we move on? Okay, in the chat, we have some additional introductions, which is great and helpful. Any questions? Okay. This grant is uh, has awards of up to $25,000. The full grant is awarded at the beginning of the project period, which is May 1st, 2023 to March 1st, 2024. If you are proposing a public event, you have an additional period of time um, to host your event. So additional details about the application, you will um, want to propose a project that incorporates scholarship informed by one or more of the humanities disciplines, and I've listed them there. You'd want to have an advisor, partner, or team member who's knowledgeable about the subject matter of your proposal. And you would need to demonstrate a connection to Washington, DC in your proposal. We would want your project to be innovative, unique, and of strong educational interest to a wide public audience. So um, demonstrating your take on whatever the particular topic is in a way that would be interesting to the public. And we'd want it to be publicly accessible, whatever that looks like for your project. Some um, created website, as we discussed, some have documentaries that they may be screening. And for events in particular, we would want them to be open to the public. And while the entire event might not be free, at least some portion of it should be free and affordable. Some required elements of the um, proposal and touching a little bit on what you would want to demonstrate as you complete that aspect of the proposal. You'll be required to provide an organizational profile. And the purpose of that is to demonstrate your connection to the proposed project. So make the case that it makes sense that you are doing whatever it is that you're proposing to do. You'll describe your activities to show how you will accomplish your goal. You will describe the key personnel. And so you want to 
list and talk about the people that will ensure that the project will be successful. The project timeline is also required. And so as what you're doing when you're just detailing your timeline for us is showing how you will accomplish your goals during the project period. And with your project budget and narrative, the reviewers are gonna be assessing whether the costs are allowable and whether they're sufficient and make sense for the project that you've identified. And finally, measuring success. You'll wanna talk about what does success mean to you and how will you know you've achieved it? How will you know that your project is successful? I talked about, uh, I mentioned reviewers. And as we um, talked about in the first overview workshop, our review process relies heavily on extent, external individuals, experts, and community members. They're the ones that review the proposals, make comments on them, discuss among themselves, and then prioritize them, rank them. And then we largely take their rankings based on the amount of funds available, and that is what we put forward to our board for approval. So community members as reviewers do essentially make our grant decisions, strong recommendations for our grant decisions. And so um, it's not staff here at Humanity CC, and you want to ensure that your proposal is as clear as possible and really speaks to the criteria and questions in the application instructions. In terms of project costs, 1% of the awarded grant funds must be applied to the direct program costs. Some of the things the grant can fund is project supplies and equipment, space rental, honoraria wages, stipends, transportation, et cetera. It's important to note the things that cannot be funded by these funds. And to a great extent, it's based on the fact that um, there's a government element to the source of our funds. Cannot fund indirect costs, overhead, rent, that type of thing. General office supplies that aren't directly related to the project, fundraisers and special events and refreshments. So let me take a look at some of the questions. Looks like there's just one so far. Curious about whether something like a series of poetry readings would qualify. They certainly could. You would want to embed them into the humanities and talking about, you know, that we don't fund performances for the sake of a performance, but certainly it might be interpreting something or um, in some way connected to a specific as aspect of the humanities. And there's definitely a way that poetry reading could do that. In fact, we internally have been talking about whether we would do some type of poetry event and how we would ensure that it is more than just a performance, but um, connected to what the humanities are about. Strategies for successful applications to keep in mind. Breaking down the categories on your budget sheet into individual expenses on the budget narrative so it is clear what you are requesting funding for. Clearly stating the goal of your project and how it will be achieved, making clear the benefit your project will have on DC residents. Anticipating and answering questions reviewers might have and a way to do that, which I strongly recommend is having someone on connected to the project, provide you feedback on the proposal before submitting it. And if you do include letter support, which aren't required, but are acceptable not to include letters that are not, that are from individuals that aren't directly involved in the project. Applicant resources, hopefully you've been on our website and are seeing how we have things laid out for each grant opportunity and the information and resources that are available to you. That includes a series of live workshops, recordings and presentations from past workshops, the request for proposals or RFP, the list of application questions. You submit your application in Foundant or application portal, but it can be helpful to see the questions and um, start responding to them and sharing them with your partners in advance of being in Foundant. So we provide that list for you. A frequently asked document, a frequently asked questions document or FAQ. 
tips on using Foundant, uh, if you're not familiar with it, to help you um, get into the system, that will be on the website shortly. And um, you're always welcome to contact our community grants manager um, for this round, Eli Youssef, and he also has a link, a Calendly link on the website where you can just set up one-on-one -on -one 30 minute assistance calls. Key links and contacts, that's the link to um, the grant opportunity page. The second website is to our application portal, but you can click on the link directly on our website. That's Eli's email address, and I provided my contact information as well if you needed to reach out directly to me. Um, and then in terms of submitting the application, you would go to Foundant, create a profile for yourself and your organization if this is your first time applying for grant. If it is not your first time, please do not create a new profile. Um, Eli can assist you with that if it's not clear to you when you go on to Foundant. And then once you're in the system, you click on apply on the applicant dashboard and you'll see a long list of all the grant opportunities and you'll want to ensure that you're clicking on the correct one. So now I wanted to open it up for general Q&A or if folks wanted to talk a little bit about what they're proposing and share their idea, we can do that as well. And Eli, I don't feel free if you have anything to add in general. Right. I just also want to say, um, I see someone has answered, asked a question, but just, just to be clear, if, again, if you're not familiar with Foundant, the application portal, um, we do have a document just laying out like four uh, core steps to take in terms of you know, being able to access the application, starting with creating your account. Um, and even it's not included in the document that's on our website, but you can actually just if it's still, if that's still too challenging, you can just re reach out to me directly um, so that I can like create the account for you. So that's always an option. If it's still ultimately too difficult, I can help help you ease through that process. Thanks, Eli. I'm gonna answer a question from Nick in the chat and then Linda has a question. So Nick's question was about fiscal sponsors for documentaries, whether they still have to be based in DC, which it looks like is a change that was made over time. And they do, yes, I totally understand what you're saying that you have many more options that there are many strong fiscal sponsors outside of the district, but our funding needs to go directly to organizations and individuals based um, here in DC. Um, another question in the chat, but first, why don't we go to Linda? Hi, I had the exact same question, um, so it's answered. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. The slides will be made available because we're in the process generally of updating our website. It might take a little bit longer than we intend, so um, feel free to reach out to Eli at any point, and he can send them to you. We, um, I don't know if I'd use it. The question is, do we at Humanities DC critique application in advance of submission? I don't know that I'd use the word critique, but yes, you can submit your application to get um, general feedback. You'd want to do that. What did we say, Eli, minimum of? Before Sorry, the deadline, yeah. what's, the, what's the last point that you would accept applications to provide folks feedback before the deadline? Oh, uh, one week. One, one week, okay. Well, at the latest, a week before the deadline so that we can turn that around for you. Any other questions? I have a quick one. Are there any um, sample applications that we could possibly view i know you mentioned a couple during the slideshow but are there ones that have been successful in the past that could be possible um just you know examples for format or for your budgeting that are that we could possibly view Unfortunately not. I think it's a great idea and folks have read that, read, uh, brought that up before. So I think that's something we'll think about for the future. We do not have that. So you can just reach out to us um, for ideas and we might be able to give you kind of one-off 
we couldn't give you a full proposal without the, um, you know, the approval of the person who submitted it, but we certainly can give you ideas based on past proposals and just based on our experience. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any final questions or comments? Um, hi, I have a question. Um, we are in the post-production phase of our documentary film. Um, do we need to submit a reel or a trailer for funding? When we uh, no, you do not. You don't, okay, thank yeah, you. That's not required. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, it looks like that's it for now. We continue to be available for questions. I appreciate you all taking the time to consider our opportunities and join us today. And let us know how we can be of help moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.